how many intelligent alien civilizations do you think are out there? Yeah, uh, boy, I, I have you know no expertise in that whatsoever. There, you haven't there. you haven't met any. I I I have met the ones we've made. I think that I mean exactly in some sense w with synthetic biology. Are you not creating yeah. aliens? I absolutely think so because because look, all of life, all of st all, all standard model systems are an n of one course of evolution on Earth, right? And trying to make conclusions about biology from looking at life on earth is like testing your theory on the same data that generated it it's all it's all kind of like locked in so we absolutely have to create novel uh examples that have no history on earth that don't you know like, like, as xenobots have no history of selection to be a good xenobot the cells have selection for various things but but the xenobot itself never existed before and so we can make chimeras you know we make um frog that are you know sort of half frog half axolotl you can make all sorts <laughs> nice. of hybrids right constructions of living tissue with robots and, and whatever we need to be making these things until we find actual aliens because otherwise we're just looking at an N of one set of examples, all kinds of frozen accidents of evolution and so on. We need to go beyond that to really understand biology. But we're still, even when you do a synthetic biology, you're locked in to the basic components of um, the way biology is done on this earth. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 and still, also, still limited. Yeah. And, the, and also the basic constraints of the environment, even artificial environments that construct in the lab are yep. tied up to the environment. I, I mean, what do you, uh, okay, let's say there is, I mean, what I think is there's a nearly infinite number of intelligent civilizations, living or dead out there. Um, if you pick one out of the box, what, what do you think it would look like? So in, in when you think about synthetic biology or creating synthetic organisms, how hard is it to create something that's very different? Yeah, I, th I think it's very hard to create something that's very different, right? It's um, uh, we are just locked in both 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 uh, experimentally and in terms of our imagination, right? It's it's very hard. And you also emphasize several times the the idea of shape. Yeah, the individual cell get together with other cells, and they kind of they're going to build a shape. So it's shape and function, but shape is a critical thing. Yeah. So here, I'll take a stab. I mean, I, I agree with you uh, to, to whatever extent uh, that we can say anything. I, I do think that there's, an, you know, probably an infinite number of of different uh, different um, uh, architectures with, with that are with interesting cognitive properties out there. Uh, what can we say about them? I think that um, the only things that are going, I, I don't, I don't think we can rely on any of the typical stuff. You know, carbon based. Yeah, none, none of that. Like, I think all of that is just, um, you know, us being uh, having having uh, a lack of imagination. But I think the things that um, are going to be universal, if anything, is are things, for example, driven by resource limitation. The fact that you are fighting a hostile world and you have to draw a boundary between yourself and the world somewhere. The fact that that boundary is not given to you by anybody, you have to you have to assume it, you know, uh, estimate it yourself. And the fact that you have to coarse grain your experience and the fact that you're gonna try to minimize surprise and the fact that, like these, these are the things that I think are fundamental about biology. None of the, you know, the facts about the genetic code or even the fact that we have genes or, or the biochemistry of it. I don't think any of those things are fundamental, but um, it's going to be a lot more about the information and about the creation of the self. The fact that so in my in my framework, selves are demarcated by uh, the scale of the goals that they can pursue. So from little tiny local goals to like massive you know planetary scale goals for for certain humans um, and everything in, and everything in between. So you can draw this like cognitive light cone about or that that determines the the scale of the goals you could possibly pursue. I think those kinds of frameworks. Uh, like that, like active inference and so on, are going to be universally applicable, but but none of the other things that are that are typically um, discussed. Quick pause. Do you need a bathroom break? We were just talking about uh, you know aliens and all that. And that's a funny thing, which is yeah, I don't know if you, you've seen them. There's a kind of debate that goes on about cognition in plants and what can you say about different kinds of computation and cognition in plants. And I always I always look at that stuff. I'm like, if if you're weirded out by cognition in plants you're not ready for exobiology, right? If, 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 you know, something that's that similar here on earth is already like freaking you out, then I think there's going to be all kinds of cognitive life out there that we're going to have a really hard time recognizing. I think robots will help us. Yeah. Like expand our mind about cognition. 
Either that or the word like uh, Xenobots. So, and they maybe becomes the same thing it is, you know, really when the human engineers the thing, at least in part, and then is able to achieve some kind of cognition that's different than what you're used to, then you start to understand like, oh, co- you know, every living organism is capable of cognition. Oh, I need to kind of broaden my understanding of what cognition is. But do you think plants, um, like when you when you eat them, are they screaming? I don't know about screaming. I think you have that's to- That's sca- what I think when I eat a salad. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I think you have to scale down the expectations in terms of, right, so so probably they're not screaming in the way that we would be screaming. However, there's plenty of data on plants being able to um, to do anticipation and certain kinds of memory and, and, and so on. Um, I think, you know, what, what you just said about robots, uh, I, I hope you're right, and I hope that's, but, but there's two there's two ways that people can take that, right? So one way is exactly what you just said to try to kind of expand their, expand their, 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 their notions for that category. The other way people often go is uh, they just sort of define the term as if, if, if it's not a natural product, it's, it's just faking, right? It's not really intelligence if it was made by somebody else, because it's that same, it's the same thing. They can see how it's done. And once you see how it's, it's like a magic trick when you see how it's done, it's not as fun anymore. And, and, and I think people have a real tendency for that. And they sort of, which, which I find really strange in the sense that if somebody said to me, we have all this, this, this sort of blind, like, like uh, a hill climbing search. And then, and then we have a really smart team of engineers, which one do you think is going to produce a system that has good intelligence, I think it's really weird to say that it only comes from the blind search, right? It can't be done by people who, by the way, can also use evolutionary techniques if they want to, but also rational design. I think it's really weird to say that um, real intelligence only comes from natural evolution. So I hope you're right. I hope people take it in the other the other way. But there, there's a nice shortcut. So I, I work with legged robots a lot mm-hmm. now for my, for my own uh, personal pleasure. Uh, not in that way, internet. Uh, so uh, the, the four legs, and uh, one of the things that changes my experience of the robots a lot is um, when I can't understand why I did a certain thing. And there's a lot of ways to engineer that. Me, the person that created the software that runs it, there's a lot of ways for me to build that software in such a way that I don't exactly know why. It did a certain basic decision. Of course, as an engineer, you can go in and start to look at logs. You can log all kind of data, sensory data, the the decisions you made, the, you know, all the outputs in your networks and so on. But I also try to really experience that surprise and that really experience as another person would that totally doesn't know how it's mm-hmm. built. Mm-hmm. And I think the magic is there in not knowing how it works. That I think biology does that for you through the layers of abstraction yeah it because nobody really knows what's going on inside the biological like each one component is clueless about the big picture i think there's actually really cheap systems that can that can illustrate that kind of thing which is even like um you know uh fractals right like you have a very small short formula in z and you see it, and there's no magic. You're just going to crank through, you know, z squared plus c, whatever. You're just going to crank through it. But the result of it is this incredibly rich, beautiful image, right? That that, that just like, wow, all of that was in this like 10 character long string, like amazing. So the fact that you can you can know everything there is to know about the details and the process and all the parts and everything, like there's literally no magic of any kind there. And yet the outcome is something that, you would never have expected and it's just it just you know is incredibly rich and and complex and beautiful 